Okay, well, welcome back to another episode of the Pierce Dispatch. I'm here with a very special guest today, Scott Mumford. Can you tell me about your role at Pierce? Uh, right now, I'm a production manager. I oversee the testing facility and our Checkout West area of our customer acceptance. And how long have you been in this role? Been in this role just a little over a year. A little over a year. So what did you do before that? Uh, before that, I was the testing supervisor. Before that, I was a team leader, a service technician, especially products technician, and an electrician on the line. I've been here for 23 years. So, Heck, Lots of experience. That's awesome. So can I ask you, you have a lot of experience in testing. Can you tell me a little bit of what that looks like at Pierce, like the overall testing experience? The overall testing experience, we run the trucks through a series of tests. We'll do a pre-pump out there. We'll do the foam system calibration. We'll do a, a full service alignment. We'll do a 35-mile, 45-minute road test. We'll bring it back in, do a final product evaluation of anything that we found that we didn't like, we'd need to fix. We'll fix that, and then we'll put it through a third-party UL test. Wow. Okay, so you just put a lot of different things into like five seconds. We'll break it down in a little bit. But why would apparatus testing matter to firefighters? That way they know they're getting a, a good product. It's been tested. It's been put through the paces. It's been proven. Everything is going to work. Mm -hmm. And is every single apparatus tested? Every single truck we produce is tested in one way or the other. Uh, they could be water pump tested. Uh, if it doesn't have a water pump, we'll bring it out. We still have to do a two-hour dielectric test on it. We still have to do generator testing on them if they have generators on them. So every truck we put through this facility is tested. When you say it's tested, it goes through a, a procedure that's I'm assuming, is continuously updated and evolving with time. What is the duration of this testing process? Our testing process can be anywhere from two days to five days, depending on the complexity of the trucks and the testing that we have to do to them. We'll say the average truck coming through is about four days. So you talked about foam, foam testing. What does that look like? What do you do for foam testing? Sure. Our foam testing, we bring the trucks out. We'll hook them up. We'll do our hydrostatic testing. We'll fill up the foam cell. We'll calibrate the foam systems, whether it's a Husky 3, a Husky 12, a Husky 30, Husky 60, Husky 160, or a Husky 300. It doesn't matter. We're going to calibrate it. Uh -huh. Then we'll run it through its paces. If it has a calves on it, we'll run the calves through its paces. We'll do a one-hour standby test. We'll take it out. We'll make sure it makes foam. Uh, we do also offer foam training to anybody that's buying an apparatus that hasn't had one of our foam systems on them, or they're getting an updated foam system of what they have, like a foam pro. Uh, we'll take them run it through a classroom setting. We'll take them out hands-on. I, I have four instructors that will do that. Nice. I've met some of them. They're awesome. Um, and then, it's, so it's optional training? Optional. If they okay. buy the foam system and they want the training or they've never had it before, they can option to get that and they can get the training. It's usually right around an hour and a half to two hours, depending on the the, uh, the foam system. If it's a CAFS, it could be up to four hours. Okay. And then do they just do this class when they're deciding they want the foam system or on the final inspection? On the day? final inspection, when they come in, we have an impulse so they can pick that option. Yeah. They can come out and they will run through the paces with one of the trainers in the classroom, go out, get their hands on. We'll take them out to the tech. We'll flow water and do anything they want them to do with the truck. Yeah. And um, so pump testing. This is going to be on the majority of our apparatus. What does this look like? This is on about 90% of our trucks that come through. They bring them out. We'll hook them up, do the hydrostatic test. We'll do a flow test. We'll make sure we get uh, tank capacity. Make sure there's no leaks. Everything's working like it should. Every discharge is correct. Once it's complete in that testing area, it will go over to like the FPE area, where if we did find a leak or anything, we will address it there, fix it, and then we'll redo a mini to pump over there and retest it. Mm -hmm. And so what you just explained happens before the customers get here. Oh, yeah. This happens. The trucks come off final assembly out of zone five into zone six, which is testing MRL and final assembly uh, graphics. Mm -hmm. We bring the trucks into testing and the testing happens before the customers come in. Okay. Because I know when the customers arrive, they almost do their own pump testing. I know I've been on the blue floor and they're like, oh, we got this at this time. So it's almost tested twice before it passes through the facility. Yep. That is an option. Any customers can request in Pulse. They go through and they request the foam dem or a pump demonstration. We'll take them out to Fox Valley Tech in the summertime in the nice weather. They have a nice pond out there. We flow water. We can take them up to the quarry for all of our industrial units. The wintertime, it's cold. So we bring them into the pump test facility after 2 o'clock in the afternoon and are more than welcome to do any kind of pump test they want to do. And do a lot of the departments choose to do that? Uh, I'd say it's probably about 50%. And a lot of it, is it for educational or just that extra reassurance? Extra reassurance. They want to see mm -hmm. their apparatus perform. Yeah. Sometimes it is the, the training part. They have went from a standard midship pump to a puck pump. So there are some okay. variations that they're going to 
they're going to be different. Those certain nuances are not going to be the same. And when you jump from the different types of pump styles, so your puck pump to your um, waters pump, is there different testing steps that go in with each spe specified pump? All of our or... testing procedures are the same except for the uh, GPMs. If they're, it's a 1,500, a 2,000, a 3,000, or a 6,000. Now next I want to ask about is alignment. Where does this fall in the process? This falls after the pre-pump, and it could be after the FPE. It just depends. I have team leaders out there that they jockey the trucks around to the areas that need the work that, at that point. Uh, so the alignment, it comes in, it goes rolls over the ABS tester. That's the very first thing that tests is the ABS rolls over the pit, and then they will set up. If it's a tag four, they set the jounce, they level the frame rails. If it's springs, straight axles, we have procedures that we follow. Uh, once it's complete in the alignment bay, it'll be ready for the road testers. So I, all the guys in the alignment bay, I tell them, you have somebody else's life in your hands. I think at every step you have somebody. Every step, somebody's life. These guys are going to go out on the road right after you you touch that truck. So. so it's an extremely important process. So if there were to be some instance where maybe they find something, it goes back into manufacturing. If I'm understanding correctly, gets fixed and then is rerun through the testing. It could be put back in manufacturing. We can have guys come out there, or most of the time we will just fix it ourselves. I have four chassis service technicians that are capable of fixing multiple issues. And. Road testing. Tell me about road testing. It's probably the best job we got out there. <laughs> you get to drive a truck. You get to drive a fire truck for about 35 miles, 45 minutes roughly. Uh -huh. uh, you're feeling for a bump steer, a pull, a wander. It's not just getting in and just taking it for a spin. To do your pre-trip inspection, you have to fill the tank with water. You got to take empty weights, dry weights. You have to take step heights. You have to take the angle of approach and departure. So it's it's a little more than driving, but it's probably one of the the four more fun jobs we have. Right. So have you done that before? Yeah, I'm the backup to the backup. Uh, so is there an assigned team or just an individual that does this? I have five road testers right now, okay. two full-time, and then I have three guys that are backups, and I can fill in as well on the weekends if needed. And they just take every every truck for that 30, 40-minute drive? Every single truck gets driven. Uh, we, awesome. It could go multiple times if they came back and had a wander, pull it back in the alignment bay, we verify everything, and they take it back out. Okay. So could you tell me a little bit about UL tests? We have UL Underwriters Laboratory come in and they witness our trucks. They witness every single truck that comes to our facility. We get a UL tag and put on our pump panel mm -hmm. that tells everybody that we've been certified. Our aerial department has the same procedure. They go through UL testing as well, so they get a tag. Our trucks are UL tagged for the UL. Uh, it takes about three hours per truck, and we run six trucks per day for UL. Underwriters Laboratory is a... a a worldwide organization. We'll do ULC. That's the U, the Canadian ULC. Um, it's a little bit more strenuous of a test. They have a couple of different things they want us to do to the trucks, but those trucks take about four hours a piece. Okay. And part of the UL witnessing, is it where they just watch each of the different variations of testing or? They'll tell us what pressure they want for how long they want out of what discharge. And okay. we have, we have to meet it. We have to uh, stay at our RPMs. We have to stay at a max flow. We have to stay at a minimum flow. Mm -hmm. They'll tell us what we want. I have a guy, two guys actually, that will sit there and follow them around and make the trucks do what they want them to do. And it has to pass. If it, if it doesn't pass for whatever reason, we'll take it out of testing, fix it. My team will, and they'll put it back in UL testing the next day. So now I want to ask you about the variation of testing that each apparatus body type will go through. It's a given that if it has a pump, it's going to go through what you had previously explained, the pump testing. But we have rescues, we have pumpers, aerials. Can you dive into that a little bit? Sure. All the pumper trucks are going to get pumped. Like I said, they're going to have the pump test, the foam test if they have it. They're going to get the alignment, the road test. They'll do their UL test, the FPE. Our heavy-duty rescues come out. Some have pumps, some do not. If they don't have pumps, we'll do the generator two-hour test. We'll do the alignment and we'll do the road test on it. We also do a FPE on that, a final product evaluation. And then we'll release it back to our HDR group for them to finish their work. Um, aerials, they come out. This is kind of a, a tricky situation with the aerials. We do the pre-pump before they're pinned. We'll release them over to aerial test or aerial. They'll pin them. They'll send them back to us. We'll finish all of our testing and then we'll release it back to our aerial group for them to complete their testing. Could you define what FPE is? FPE is our final product evaluation before we release the truck out to anywhere else in the facility. So we're just going to go through and fix anything that we found. We're going to give it one more evaluation and make sure everything's functioning correctly before we release the truck. And what do you mean by pin it? They will put the ladder on it. Okay. So what testing is done before the ladder is on it? Uh, we just do our pre-pump to make sure that nothing is leaking underneath because it's a little bit harder to get to when 
after it's pinned. And then after it's pinned, that's when the aerial comes in? After it's pinned, it'll, the aerial device is pinned to the truck. It comes back to us. We'll do our alignment, our third party, our road test, our FPE, and then we will release it back to the aerial group. Is there a variation between like a walk-in rescue, non-walk-in, or anything like that? It depends on what it has on the truck. Okay. Basically, it doesn't matter the body style. It's what's on the truck is what we test. Okay. And how about tankers? Tankers go through the same pump test. It's just there's a, a we have to do a tank flow test and it has to pass the tank flow test just like every other truck. That's a little bit more strenuous on a tanker. Okay. And so you had talked a little bit about how like for with the aerials, for example, before you pin the ladder to the aerial, you you take it out of the aerial group's manufacturing area, you test it, and then you put it back in and then you take it back out. So where does that happen for pumpers? Like, when does this testing happen? After all of the manufacturing is done? After all the manufacturing is done, Zone 5, Station 10, will release it out to testing. So we once Zone 5 releases it to Zone 6, it now becomes my truck, and I follow it through the rest of the process. Is that the same with rescues? The rescues will come out of rescue depart, or rescue area, come to me, and then I will release them back because they're complicated pieces of equipment. They have a lot more options going on these, so we have to release them back so they can complete them. Okay. Are they like 75% of the way done when you get them, and then they just go back for the final touches then? Yeah, they're or? between 85 and 90% done. Okay. Some come out a little more complete than others. It just depends on the options. Mm -hmm. And then could you tell me a little bit about how has this process evolved? We're evolving every year. Every time we have a new product come out, we have to adapt to it. We have to learn the new procedures, and we have to follow through. So our Husky 3, our Husky 12, any of our calf systems, the 140s, the 200s, anything that comes out, we have to adapt and overcome out there in testing. So we're evolving almost a daily because there's things that you don't see all the time. You might see it once a year. You might see it now, and then five years later, you're going to see it again. We have a wealth of knowledge out there. We have a guy out there, Ray. He's been out there for 30-plus years. He's great. So he, he, he knows what he's talking about. If Ray's telling you how to work it, Listen to Ray and work it. Do you have any examples? So you brought up the Husky 3, Husky 12. Are there any other innovations that you guys have newly adopted into the process? Uh, we just recently did our first three Volteras out there in testing, like our hands-on testing. We've mm -hmm. always done the testing on the Volteras, but we've had uh, NPD with us. Now, the last three, they've turned loose to us, and we've done them ourselves. So that okay. that's, a, you know, adapt and overcome. My trainers have been out with the guys at the tech showing them how to use these trucks. So they're they're constantly learning. And then could you just tell me a little bit about what the impacts would be and how they would be felt maybe by a firefighter in the absence of all the rigorous testing we do? Uh, they could possibly get their trucks and things are not going to work the way they, they thought. They're going to pull the number one discharge and water's going to come out of number three. And the guy on the number one hose is like, where's my water? You know, they, they want these things tested and, and I don't blame them. Right, right. I mean, that importance just runs tried and true every single day in every call that they're running on. I mean, I can't imagine. I'm not a firefighter, but if I buy, buy a truck, I want it to work perfectly. Do you have any standout moments in your time in the testing area that, you know, you think about ever? Impactful times, funny times? My team out there when I first became the supervisor, because I had worked with them as a service technician, they, they kind of didn't know how to take me. I made a bet with them. I said, if you can do this in 24 hours... I will buy you steak. 23 hours later, they called me. Hey, boss, we're done. I stood out there and grilled steaks for an hour and a half. So now they're like, hey, you going to buy us steaks again? I'm like, never again, never. guys. That's I'll buy a you lot. Anything, I'll buy you anything but steak. Sure, sure. I treated them guys like family. Yeah. And I, I still do. I still go out and visit every day. And do you think that has helped your, you know, your team unite and efficiency and effectiveness on the floor? Oh, Absolutely. If you, you give them a goal and they accomplish that goal and you reward them every time they get that goal, they're, they're just going to keep hitting it. Yeah. And they knock it out of the park. Good. Could you tell me about any customers that stand out in your mind when it comes to testing? I'd say the Maui customers. Those guys, they travel a long ways and they want their truck to be spot on. So they want to do a pump demo every time they, they're here. And I've worked with them as a service tech and on the lines and as a team leader. And now they're like, hey, Scott, come on, let's go. We're going to go pump the truck. And then, you know, it's a good time. Well, great. I've definitely learned so much about testing, and I definitely want to have you back on if I can find another reason. Absolutely. But thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you cool. for having me.